Hey everyone, welcome to The Cutting Edge, where culture meets crypto. Today, we have a multidisciplinary artist that uses surrealist imagery to deliver emotion through his visual narratives. His mediums include skin, sound, screens, glass, fabric, metal, and concrete. He's garnered critical acclaim in multiple arenas, including the international tattoo stage, the upscale fashion indus design industry, the digital NFT space, and the world of sculpture and fine art. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend, Snuffy. Snuffy, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing amazing. It's an honor to be here with you. Yeah, dude, thank you for taking the time. Um, I, I, I guess for, for those of us, for those that don't know, like we, I feel like our, we met pretty recently, but I feel like we really hit it off, right? Like I, when the first time we met, uh, we're, it was at that a Halloween party, right? At the beginning of NFT NYC. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, Doc's G right now, but I saw his eyes on Halloween, and I, <laughs> and the second time I met him, I was like, "This is crazy," because he had these crazy contacts in, and I was like, "This is nuts." So, uh, yeah, we yeah we met at that Halloween party uh, through our friend, um, who yeah I can't say his name because he's offended by it apparently. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, and like I remember, he was telling me like for months. He's like, "Yo, you gotta meet my boy Snuffy. You gotta meet my boy Snuffy." And like, you know, admittedly, like I have a lot of people always like hitting me up uh, to kind of like check this out and check that out. That like it kind of fell by the wayside, and I I wish it didn't. But you know, whatever. I, I'm glad we got the chance to meet. And like I said, I think we really hit it off. Um, we, we met at the Halloween party, and I was like, "All right, like I'm in New York this week. Like let's try to meet up again." And then um, you. Uh, you inked me up right here, oh, yeah. and, you know, and uh, that's my first tattoo ever. Uh, and honestly, I don't think it's going to be my last. Like, I've definitely been been thinking about it. But um, yeah, like you were super dope and super chill. And like, I remember I came by, I think it was a Friday. I came by your studio and we hung out and like we were talking about like one, your creative process and like your history and how you ended up in the space. So like let's start there. Like, let's, let's talk about how, you know, you got into tattooing and becoming an artist and, you know, uh, how, like, kind of like your origin story until you ended up here in the space. But like, let's just start with like early days, and how you got started. Yeah. Um, a weird, I guess it was tough. Like I, I, I always wanted to, uh, I, I'll try not to go too far back because we'll be here forever. But, um, <laughs> I, uh, I was a troubled youth. Um, I was, I, I met a lot of judges. Let's put it that way. Um, so, uh, yeah, I became a landlord. That was my goal. I wanted to be a landlord by the time I turned uh, like 21. And so I like was a real estate agent in Boston and that sucked. Like I hated Wait, it. Are you, from, are you from Boston? No, I was born in Israel and I grew up in New York, but I got in too much trouble in New York before college. So I had to leave. Cause you have a, like, I have a thick New York accent. You have, you have a New York accent too. So. It's, I don't think I do, but I guess I, you know, I'm like a, like a, what's the, the a lizard, a gecko. I, I like a, okay. a just or whatever. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, that's probably the wrong animal. I'm like a bear. <laughs> I <adjust>. um, <laughs> but, so you were a real estate agent up in Boston. Yeah. And then I became a landlord. I bought a building off Craigslist in Williamsburg in 2011 uh i okay so I, yeah go ahead so, so just for like the listeners that that don't know like right now williamsburg is probably one of the nicer neighborhoods in new york city but in 2011 mm. and i know this because i remember looking at apartments in williamsburg and i was like fuck no i'm not living here but like williamsburg was not what it is today you know like it was very yeah. it was it was a uh, fringe i guess you would call it the best sure. way to call it I'm coming probably well, before I mean, <laughs> I remember when I saw like the first model like walking through Williamsburg, and I was like, "What? Are you, <laughs> what are you doing here? Like, what the fuck?" <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, even to be fair, even by 2010 or 11, Williamsburg was already sort of like had its first, you know, glaze of paint over it. Um, but you know, my brothers moved here in like 98. And so I remember I'd skateboard down North sixth street to the DIY skate park. There was a DIY skate park on the water where all these big, tall buildings are now. Uh, and I'd be skating around syringes and there, you know, at night there'd be like, you know, illegal activity on the corner and cars parked on the sidewalk and shit. 
it was like Mad Max, you know, it was a cool time um, to be like nine years old skateboarding. <laughs> and, but, um, but yeah, anyway, I, I can go on tangents, but we, yeah, I bought my first building in Williamsburg around 2011 on Craigslist. And um, yeah, it worked out. I, it was not an easy, uh, easy feat. You know, it was uh, a lot of saving money and begging for it too. So it was like tough, you know, those like mailers they send that are like, call us now we'll give you 50 grand i did that <laughs> it worked it was crazy okay. wait like you call you were you were offering people money or you took the money oh no i took the money to like buy the building okay all right okay yeah all right that's, I, crazy. that's crazy yeah i took that like loan shark money and it, it like kind of worked so okay. um, so yeah so i did that and i succeeded and i bought a couple buildings and you know i never flipped any i just like fixed them and rented them and it was difficult, um, you know, to start from scratch, like to do that. And um, yeah, I reached a point where it was like on paper, I was very successful, um, but I was super depressed. And um, yeah, I was like 20, I always made music. So I had, I've always had a creative sort of outlet, but by the time I was 28, I was like in a really dark spot. I had been engaged and then got pre, like not what, we just broke up, I guess. It wasn't a divorce. <laughs> um and then yeah i was walking by strand books and i was like i just want to draw and i started drawing and two weeks later i had a tattoo license that i mean so i think that's crazy because like you're if anybody's seen your artwork like your artwork is incredible and so you didn't like grow up like just drawing like a ton of stuff like all like grow, like nonstop. no i actually i have my book over at my desk on it set it shows my first drawing so actually, here's my first set of drawings and it's backwards oh no it's not 12 24 17 that's my first drawing wow um, and this was from that drawing book like kind of like just like learning how to draw like on your own with, with with the book yeah i mean i i did get um like this drawing like court like book thing that was like uh learn how to draw or whatever and within like two days, I was just like, fuck this. And just like I put a figurine on the table and just drew it. And then I was like, oh, this isn't good. And then I just drew it again. And that was. Uh... So, yeah, I'm like going through the drawing book. Uh, here we go. So one day later, I was like, fuck this. That shows like how much I how good I am with direction. I was like, fuck <laughs> So I was like, fuck it. I'll draw this owl. And like it's really like disproportionate and shitty. So then I was just like. I'll just do it again. So then I drew it like a little more proportional and see that's one day later. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's sick. Like, I feel like if I was drawing for one day, like I would still be drawing stick figures. Like, yeah, well, that's, crazy. that's awesome. It's actually funny. I never really like showed this, but yeah, this is day one, like minute one. It was like uh -huh. this and that and then, and still day one. I mean, that's still really good for day one. Like I would, I, my, my drawing skills are terrible. Look at this extra finger. Kind so <laughs> <laughs> of funny, yeah. And then I just gave up on the book, and I was like, "Fuck it," and just started drawing like random shit. And so, yeah. Okay, so wait, so you started drawing, and then you said two weeks later you got your tattoo license. Like, how did yeah. how did like you go from drawing on a page to being like, I wanna like draw on people? Um, I always love tattoos. My brothers are older than me, so like my 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 brother's like 13 the, not the one that you met my my other brother he's one year he's like 13 years older than me and so 13 when he was 16 he got his first tattoo which means i was what three or something so as far as i can remember i always wanted a tattoo you know so then i i'm cursed with like liking expensive shit it's not it just is, you know, you put me in a store and you take all the price tags out and I'll point to the thing I like. And it's just the most expensive thing. I, I just, it's got so <laughs> I have the same problems. So don't worry about it. <laughs> we're, we're dangerous together. The synergy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's it. I started to do the real estate thing and, you know, see a bit of success. And next thing you know, I was getting tattooed by fucking people that were expensive because I was like, oh, this is, this is it. So then when I um, started drawing, it was kind of like a no brainer to, um, to go into tattooing. Cause I was just always into it, but I never 
knew I could draw or even cared to try. So I never, cons- you know, when I was getting tattoos, I was never like, fuck it. Like I'm going to do, be a tattoo artist. I was just like, that's for those people, you know, I'll do this and fine. You know, so that's one reason of how I became a tattooer. The other thing is, you know, I almost hit bankruptcy twice because one of the buildings we bought on North 6th Street, it was a f- just super dark time and had a tenant. They were illegal, got them out, got a new tenant in, refinanced. And then the day that the refinance hit, my tenant went bankrupt. And that was like crazy. So basically, uh, it was this like huge company. I don't know. I don't know if I'm like, le- I guess I'm legally allowed. It was like uh, the founder of, uh, I'm not going to say it. I don't want to get in trouble. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Who- so the bottom line is my brother and I got left holding the bag, like $55,000 a month for a 10,000 square foot building on North 6th Street. And yeah, we almost like hit bankruptcy. It's such a shit show. You know, we don't have that money. So, um, but what I saw was the whole neighborhood getting sterilized. You know, our neighbors like got, we're now like the owners of like fucking like, I don't know, like Dodger Stadium, you know, these big real estate investment trusts and buying up 10 buildings in a row in Williamsburg. And then just like waiting for Nike to come in and basically sterilizing the whole neighborhood. So basically what happened was I was like, all right, I have this 10,000 square foot building. All these people are out of touch. I'm young. I have young friends. Boom. Let me open the doors. Anyone that wants to be creative and make art and have like productive time can come here and do it. And next thing you know, I met Gucci Ghost and fucking Cameron and all of ASAP Rocky's crew was coming in and like crashing there and shit, like made a lot of amazing friends and a lot of amazing connections just by like going web three in 2014, you know, everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> the original web three. Yeah. Web, <laughs> web three. So then uh, as soon as I started drawing and tattoo, like, and getting my tattoo license, I already had this like community of a hundred something people that were just like, in and out you know that was the headquarters and everyone's like yo i want a tattoo and i was like all right so i pumped out like 100 (laughs) tattoos in the first like month and a half and yeah it was just fucking off to the races you know it's just like when you're i think one of the challenges for a lot of tattoo artists is like clients but i sort of like i have a theory that if you climb one ladder in life you don't need to go back to the ground to start climbing the next ladder. You can like move, you know, horizontally to the next rung of whatever ladder and start climbing. So in this case, like I climbed the real estate ladder and just moved horizontally to the tattoo ladder. And then I climbed that and moved horizontally to fine art and NFTs and so on. So Yeah. And I, I want to, I guess I, I want to go back a little bit to um, like, when you got stuck holding the bag, right, with uh, with the rent, because I think that like there's, I, I like focusing on these hard parts because like I know, especially for my journey, and I know when we spoke about it uh, the first time you we were hanging out in your studio, where it's like it is so, uh, I feel like it's very like luck and success. People are like, oh, like that guy's so lucky, or like whatever, he's so successful, he doesn't know like what hardship is. Like everybody goes through some point where they're like one questioning themselves or a really hard time, uh, whatever it is, right? It's all relative. But like, I, I, you know, how, where, did you learn how to tattoo because you were in that spot? Or like, how did that happen? Like, did that kind of like put like the overdrive on that creative juice because you were in that situation where you're kind of like, fuck, like, what do I do? Right. So, yeah, man, it's a lot to unpack, I guess. Let's unpack it. Let's unpack. (laughs) I just am like a Jew from New York. So like my best skill is like finding something to like whine or complain about. (laughs) So number one, number two, almost going bankrupt basically twice and pretty much like right now too. um, Is buying all the NFTs. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's, I welcome that stuff. Like that's what builds character. You know, that's what like, like that's what makes it so worth it it's like when i succeed it's it's 
I feel like I, I fucking earned it. You know what I mean? It's so, I don't run away from feelings. I found a way to, to um, give myself therapy. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I, I found, yeah, yeah, that's it. It's just like from pain and from all that dark place I was in, I was able to um, use art to show people how I feel. Um, And I think that it's a really dangerous place, like to only make art from pain, because then you end up um, just seeking pain a lot. And it's like a very masochistic cycle. And I think for the sake of sustainability and yeah, sustainability, I needed to master my emotions to be able to create art in any mood. Um, So I don't think I answered your question at all. (laughs) No, but no, thank you for opening up. I I appreciate it. Because I I think like, at least for me, one of those things that um, I I remember like a couple of years ago, I was going through like this kind of like, uh, like, you know, what am I on here? What am I, what am I on this planet to do? Right? Like, what is my purpose? And one of those things is like, I was like, oh, like I'm not as happy as I wanna be, right? And I was like, originally like, all right, my my quest was like, I wanna be like in uh, a better mood all the time. But to your point is like, life is about ups and downs, right? Like, you know, not, if if everything in life was like a happy moment, then you wouldn't really cherish those happy moments, right? Cause it's like, you know, you'd be just so like, you'd just be so um, numb to the idea of happiness that you're like, yeah, like, you know, whatever, like happiness is cool, but like, you know, Um, when you get those ups and downs, like the hard parts and the the downs, like make you appreciate the good parts that much more. Right. So like, I totally understand what you're saying with that. Would you, cause you're, you're sober also, right? Yep. So at like, what point did that, and, and this is not like a, you know, preachy, like a, like everybody gets sober type of thing, but did that help in your like was that a catalyst to you saying that you want to be happier more often uh yeah well i i found that like a lot of times with my drinking like i wasn't as happy as i wanted to be um and you know it was like all right well let me just like the same way that like we'll do trial and error like with any new diet right where it's like you sit there and you're like well this doesn't work uh so like i gain weight when i eat this let me take that out and so it was just really like the process of like, all right, well, what am I doing that I think uh, is affecting my mood in a negative way? Uh, Mm -hmm. And I would go about taking those things out. And I just realized that one, I was a little more even keeled, right? Because I didn't have the volatility in my emotions that that alcohol brings. But uh, then like you take that one step deeper and being like, okay, so then like, what does what is what does that mean taking it to the next level, right? Like, how can I be uh, a better human being and like be happier and more content and like, kind of like, have a bigger impact on the world than just like, oh, how is this going to affect me, right? Um, Because I I really do think that like helping other people is probably like, it's selfishly one of the best feelings ever, right? Like it's like, I I think people will always say it's like, you know, it's like I like anytime like I I help somebody charitably and they're like, thank you. And I'm like to myself, I'm like, this helps me more than it helps you, right? Like I feel good about myself as a human being when I help somebody else. And that's worth a lot more than like, any monetary value yeah i agree and it's nice like i i find that i kind of go against my feelings or like against logic so i'll I'll find like when i have the least money is when i'll be like you know what let's do some shit for charity you know what i mean and like it's this weird like it's that thing that I need at that time. Like I need to give, you know, I need to, right. I need to, you know, give, give back. But I'm, I'm also curious and I, I don't want to like, you know, take over the, the line of questioning here. Um, but what was the way that you sort of got in touch with your emotions after, and just to give context to the question, when I was doing a lot of drugs and all that, it was to suppress emotions. You know, so basically, like scientifically, your brain emotionally stops developing when you start using drugs. So I started when I was like 12 or 13 and I stopped when I was 21. 
So when I was 21, I had the emotional development of like a fucking 13 year old. Um, so the question is like, how did, how did you adjust to that? How did I adjust to? To dealing with your emotions. Oh, oh I mean, dude, that's that, that, like, I mean, I still deal with it, right? Like I think everybody deals with it. Right? That's part of the human experience. Mm-hmm. I think that um, today it's like, I, I, I enjoy it, right? It's like, you know, the ups and downs, it's part of life, right? Kind of to like what I was saying earlier, where it's like, yeah, like not everything is going to be great and not everything is going to be terrible, right? And try to live, let's say I, if I live on a scale of like zero to 10, right? Like I would live at between like two and eight, right? Like I, that would be like the volatility of my emotions. And it's like, how do we get that from like a four to a six, right? And like have more serenity, right? Because I think that that's like really... Um, what a lot of people are are looking for, right? It's like more, not necessarily to be happy, but more to be serene, right? And like, mm-hmm. for me, that involves like talking to my higher power every day, meditating, right? Like just having like a list of things that I know that like, if I consistently do this all all throughout the course of, of time, like that I will be feeling better overall. Like, I, I, I let me throw the question right back at you. How do you deal with it? Um, yeah, make art. It's and <laughs> so it's important because I have an apprentice and I I wouldn't say I like mentor people, but I'm sort of like uh, just like uh, some people are my guidepost. I'm a guidepost for others. And I just make sure that everyone has their outlet. You know, they, they need a valve, you know, a pressure release valve. Mm-hmm. And luckily for me, if I'm like one fucking radiator, I have like 12 pe- pressure release valves. You know, I have uh making music i have cinema 4d photoshop tattooing and so on and so on and so on and it's just like each one of these things provides a different uh pressure release where i have i'm just like giving myself tools to cope with what's in my mind and all i'm looking to do is just get things out of my brain as fast as possible even if i don't understand them now they're here so that i can like for example like this like Here's this stupid little drawing I did. And ooh, I don't know. Yeah, so there's a yeah, yeah. Yeah. But now I did this drawing while I was like on the phone with somebody and I was like, oh, okay. Interesting. And then I sort of like analyze what's going on in here. So sometimes I make it knowing why I'm making it, and other times I make it as like an art therapy. And right. that's how I deal with it. That so so I mean, I guess going back to what you were saying before, right? Where it's like when you started, uh you would be you were inspired by like you know being in a sad space or like a, not necessarily like the best place right yeah. and now um you've been able to channel that and that's kind of why you got into tattooing as well is being able to channel it into like better energy i mean look tattooing is something i got into because it also made sense financially i'm not gonna sit here and pretend it's not you know i get paid a lot of money to draw on people but you know when you when you uh spread out how much I charge over how much, how long they're expected to live. It's like a dollar a day, you know what I mean? Or like 50 cents a day for 20 years. It's like, come on, you know? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, great value. When you put it that way, it makes so much sense. Well, totally. And everything is just about how it's packaged. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you ever watch Simon Sinek uh, talk about how Apple managed to sell cell phones and Dell made just as good a product and nobody bought their shit. And cause it's just about packaging and, what people believe in time for another story but either way yeah i got into tattooing because it felt right i wanted to be yeah i wanted to be like appreciated for my creativity and for my brain and not just like and and appreciated by my peers you know when i was a landlord the only person that appreciated me like kind like whatever the people that gave me praise were like my 60 year old lawyer that was like you know I wish my son would be more like you, you know? And I'm just like, thanks, man. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. So, um, so I got into tattooing because I wanted to contribute to society creatively and feel like that was my, you know, my fulfillment. And I think what I did learn after getting arrested was that, you know, if your goal is to uh, make money, then you'll never be happy because you just can't have all the money, you know? So after I got arrested, I quickly realized like, if I seek fulfillment 
you know, happiness is just a collateral benefit of that. And sometimes happiness isn't, you know, sometimes sadness is. But if you're seeking fulfillment, then you're doing things that are, I guess, I don't have another word for fulfillment, that they're fulfilling. So it just is what it is. You're doing things with purpose. That's what it is. Right, so. with purpose, yeah. So tattooing yeah. was that for me. And I guess that's a, a, a good a good place to kind of talk about because uh, one of the things I really liked uh, when we were hanging out in your studio was you were kind of going through your process of, you know, what is it like to get tattooed by Snuffy? And I would love to kind of hear that because, like, you know, you've tattooed, like, plenty of famous people, right? Pete Davidson, Machine Gun Kelly, to name a few. And it's like, and you told me that, like, everybody that gets inked by you has the same exact process that they have to go through. So, like, I think that that would be, like, really cool to share. Sure. Um, um, to, vi like, to give a, paint a picture, I see myself as just, like, an, a vehicle with an empty gas tank. And I take people's stories and I fill my gas tank up with that. And it takes us where we need to go. So, the process is this, is uh, you write me a story. And then I sit with that story for as long as it takes you know sometimes it's a day and sometimes it's a couple weeks and you know for the most part i just like sit alone in a dark room and put the same song on repeat and read this story um and that story basically i'll like key in on a word or a sentence and it'll trigger um like a life event that i've had and that's where like these two stories intertwine and I create this design that is, you know, I, I don't, that is basically um, the, the synergy of, of like your story and mine. And right. then I tell it as a tattoo. Yeah. So basically when people come to get inked by you, they're not necessarily like, Hey, like I want to put this here and this there. You're kind of like, well, tell me the story and I'm going to give you like my, what, like I'm going to give you something that's my interpretation of the story. Yeah, exactly. I reached a point pretty quickly in my career that it was just like, yeah, you come to me for my art and for my brain. You don't, you don't come to me because you want a lion on you. But right. I mean, not to jump, but the next project I'm doing, you can actually see all the pieces I've done. So there are a lion or a cherub or this or that. So I can't say I haven't done those. But at this point in my career, it's like, yeah, you come to me because of my art you don't come to me as like i'm not a hired gun you know that's right. it how how quickly i guess did you because I, I assume it wasn't like that from the start so like how quickly like into you tattooing that like it started becoming where you were just like no nah, i don't want to do that or like that's not the process i want to do i want to do this process um maybe like 10 months in yeah that's pretty quick months. that's pretty that's really quick yeah, I'm I'm an addict. Right. I'm an addict. And it just like I I'm a monster of consumption. So I started learning cinema 4D in like May. So like I just I don't sleep. I don't know. It's like I'm cursed. So, right, right, so right, right. yeah, probably no, the same. That, that that's I mean that's awesome, right? Like that's I mean that's how you're able to master the craft like that quickly, right? Like what was your first introduction, I guess, to crypto? Because like you're uh, a smart dude. Like you might have been around for a minute before you got into NFTs. No, man. I I have the same story as everyone else. My brother lived in Japan and I was like, hey, dude, we could buy a fucking Bitcoin for like five dollars and then sell it on empty gox for five dollars and fifty cents. Are you in? And he's like, I guess, I don't know. And I was like, All right, I'll 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 do the thing. So I'm like trying to figure it out and I'm like, fuck, I don't have a Connecticut bank account. Like, I can't do this from New York. It's illegal. Yeah. I can't. So that was my story. We were like, fuck it. Let's buy Bitcoin at $5. And then since it didn't happen, and between then and like this year, anyone that talked about Bitcoin, I was like, please stop talking. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> like, So that's my, that was like, I knew about the shit, but I was like, I don't know. And my ex-fiance at the time, I think she dropped like, the drug addicts well she's not i'm saying i am whatever but we're capable of a lot of shit and like she figured out like tor onion silk road bought like mad drugs on silk road she spent like i don't know like 20 bitcoin and this was like not that long ago anyway yeah how i got introduced to nfts 
is ba- is a different story. So basically, from tattooing, like over the last two and a half or three two and a half years, I've been working on um on my I'm gonna unplug that. I've been working on a fine art project, which you saw. Um, I actually have a piece. This is a sample piece right here. Ugh. So it's I welded all these frames, yeah, mm-hmm. and then I took a light pad and. Yeah, it's glass and it's it's a whole fucking thing, right? But you see how it, how the glare is? It's impossible to capture this with a camera and I'm not a photographer. So during COVID, I couldn't, you know, I was alone, which was the best thing in the world. And I was like, I want to learn how to animate. So I took these pieces and basically animated them in After Effects because I was like, I need to uh, display my fine art in the digital world um this and was wait, and to that point right because i because i've seen them in person is they're they're almost like light boxes right so it's like you shine any light on them and it casts a shadow so that there's almost like no very clear picture that you can take that yeah. you can then upload digitally right it's really hard so yeah so two years ago is when i started learning animation because i was me and Pete were like in his basement, like, fuck it, let's do a cartoon. And so like I learned character animator in a night and we have like a bunch of cartoons that will never come out. But um, that's where I started learning to animate. And then I was like, I'm going to have my art show at some point when COVID's over or whatever, if it ever is. And I was like, I need to display. So then I learned After Effects. And then basically a producer at Nifty Gateway comes through here in February, I'd say. And it was right as I had finished my the the this like light box series. It took three years to finish this fucking fine art shit. Crazy. So, know, well, by the way, if, if anybody if anybody is in New York City and wants to check it out, it is they are the pieces are amazing. They're incredible. It's uh where it's on Bond Street, right? The the gallery. I forgot the exact number. Yeah, it's on Fifty Seven Bond Street, and I think it's gonna be. So we the show's been extended. It's on 57 Bond. And then there's another... I have a solo show coming up in May. But there's like seven projects between now and then. So mm-hmm. fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Palo Gallery. Sorry. P-A-L-O. Thanks. Um, P-A-L-O Gallery. So whatever. We'll okay, shit all the info. I'll uh, that, yeah, I'll link that in the show notes too. So don't worry. But yeah, so, uh, you, so the producer from Nifty Gateway comes by. Yeah, and I was just like on a thousand. I was like, we just finished the thing. This is nuts. It was three. I'm, dude, I can't express like, have you ever worked on something for three years? And it's like, you think you're done, and then you're not. And then you right. think you're done, and then you're not. And it's just like, I've never, and then my art advisor, who you know, uh, the rabbi, yeah. and he's like, nah, you're, you're not done. You got you to gotta be patient. What's the worst thing you tell an addict is to wait. I'm just like, fuck you, I want to kill you. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but hey, it all worked out. And so finally, after three years, I was like, they're done. They finished. And guess what? They weren't fucking done <laughs> after that. <laughs> anyway. So what, she, else needed, what else did you have to do? So uh, let's see if I can show you. Kind of. So inside of the, this is three layers of glass. Let me wipe it a little. Hard to see. This is three layers of glass. And in between each layer, there's a, um glass i think these are glass but there were acrylic spacers in between each layer and all these materials are kind of like earth i mean it's fucking steel and glass so then you throw acrylic in there and they have different thermal coefficients so next thing you know the acrylic started bowing out and i have to take the whole piece apart and so what we did instead was we custom ordered magnets and now it's like these are like fucking apocalypse proof. You know, these will last forever because it's like glass, magnet, and metal. It's really right. shit. Right, right. Um, so she shows up and I'm fucking thrilled. And then I was like, here's the thing. And then she's like, oh, and I was like, yeah, they're hard to think. So then I show her um the animations of the stuff, which I think you've shown, they've never been released. It's my hand-drawn artwork. I mean it's a whole thing and um but it's animated and i'd made it for my fine art and she's like all right you have a nifty date and i was like sweet and then she left and i looked at my manager and i was like 
what's Nifty Gateway? And then <laughs> I was just like, I'm, and then I don't, I don't fucking know. It just turns out Nifty Gateway is a big deal. And I was like, okay, word, this is cool. You know, it was like open seat. I, I didn't know nothing. I had no fucking clue. Uh-huh. And so the way I approached it was like, all right, here is just a new arena to show my art, you know, or no, no bullshit. Just like. I make tattoos, they go on skin. I make fine art, it goes into a gallery on Bond Street. I make NFTs and it goes into this place. <laughs> you know? It's, <laughs> I, I, it's, it goes back to that valve, like that pressure release valve. Like, do you know how like rewarding it is to make art with color? It's amazing. You know, I do black and gray tattoos because in that medium, black and gray is timeless. And I do the I do shit because I like it. And then everyone else either, you know, if they like it, it's a collateral benefit for them. You know, it's not I don't do shit because other people will like it. I do shit because I like it. You know, I get a penthouse in L.A. to tattoo at because I want a penthouse. I don't do it to show off to my clients. It just that's and it's cool. So it's like following my intuition is how it got got to here. So anyway, that's how I got into NFTs. Okay. Uh, that, that's awesome, right? And so then, like, when you so that was in February, right? February, March. Mm, mm-hmm. And yep. so then, when you got into the space, what were your initial thoughts? And like, what were you? What were your initial thoughts of like the NFT space? And and like, how has that changed over time? Um, my initial thoughts were, holy shit. Um, how can I make thirty six hours in a twenty four hour day? I was like. This is, not, you know, I, so just a prerequisite to this answer. My goal now is to completely dissociate from social media. That, that's been my goal for the last two or three years. Like, it's so unhealthy. I make my art about it. So it's just like, I have a piece called New Drugs. It was part of my first drop ever. It's like me explaining how I am a suck, I'm a, just like, addicted to technology and it's not healthy, but in order to succeed in NFTs, I had to be on this thing. You know what I mean? It was like, it was such an oxymoron. It was crazy. So it's, it's funny. Was, it's funny you say that. Cause I like, um, before I got into the NFT space, I like very much had the same thing, right? Where I would have like my timer of how much time I spend on Instagram, how much time you spend on socials, right? Where it's like, you know, you don't want to go over this and then it locks and stuff like that. But it's like, to your point is like, now like you, it's part of, it's part of the job, right? For better or worse, right? And uh, yeah. and it can yeah. get taxing. It's a sacrifice. I think that, you know, so like Alejandro from NFT now is always like tweeting about, um, Mental health. health. Yep. Yeah. And it's like, he nails it. You know, it's really important, especially with all these young artists coming up and all these societal, like, sort of like beliefs, you know, that you need to be a starving artist and no sleep culture and all. It's like, get fucking sleep. Uh, You know, you want to make art for the rest of your life? Get rest. Figure Mm -hmm. out a way that this shit can be sustainable. Cut yourself off. Like, don't fucking I here I have a phone with my social media and this laptop they do not come to my home that's it wait is that, is that this is that the secret phone you were telling about the one that's the one that doesn't have social media yeah you have both my numbers okay. but I'm about to like straight up just goodbye that's it. Right. but so t- really to circle back to your thing well actually no I think it's an important point um moderation is something that this space is either gonna learn uh is gonna learn the hard way or not the hard way you know so it's like you know it's people are so demanding they are so i'm just one per and i don't really experience it too bad you know like i talk with other people in the business that are like they do they get wrecked this is not sustainable you know people disappear off the face of the earth for you know, a week or two weeks because they're just like, 
Yeah, you, yeah, no, I, dude, I experienced it firsthand, right? Where I think we all do to, to our own extent. But like, mm -hmm. one of the things that I try to be like is, you know, when you first get into the space, you're like, you have FOMO, right? Because you're like, oh my God, like, I don't want to miss that. I don't want to miss that. But I think part of like, uh, I think it comes with maturity, like in life, but then also the more time you spend in the space is like, I'm going to miss shit, right? Like it's, it's going to happen, right? You can't, like, you can't sit there and be a slave to the screen. Like what, what yeah. is the point of having so much success? If you're just going to be like glued to your screen all day being like, oh, like, I can't miss this drop. I can't miss that. Like, I need, you know, there's, this thing is popping. Like I need to buy some. And it's yeah. like, to me, it's like, you know, the beautiful thing I think NFTs have afforded a lot of people is the opportunity to increase their quality of life. Right. And it's like, take advantage of that. Like a lot of people I'd say in the last 12 to 24 months have made like life changing money. Right. That like, you know, I always like my favorite stories on, on Twitter, are like people that, you know, say how like they, they had nothing, they were in debt like a year and a half ago. And now they're like, you know, doing incredibly well. And I'm like, dude, that, that's fucking awesome. Now get outside and enjoy life, right? Like, and, and, and understanding that that's okay. It's okay to miss every opportunity, right? And but I think that comes with time, right? To your point is like, people either need to learn it easily or they're gonna learn it the hard way. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, there's so much to, so much to piggyback on what you said, like what the space has, has brought to people who, yeah, I mean, I guess the moderation thing, it's like, that's something that I learned in getting sober actually is um, the first year I was sober, I, I was, I was like huge into clubbing. I was DJing and all this stuff. And I was just like, so what taught me, what taught me not to FOMO was uh, when I got sober, I went every weekend in Manhattan. I went every weekend to the nightclub, district 36, Pasha, all these places. I'm, you know, I keep yeah. thinking I'm really young, but I'm starting to get older. Um, I probably you and Pasha at like five o'clock in the morning somewhere. <laughs> probably. We were like very much there a lot. We had this game. This is like uh, not safe for work or whatever. We had this game where we would take a bag of, can I say this? We take a bag of ketamine. <laughs> You're like, yeah. All right. <laughs> Ten years ago. Take a bag of ketamine and a straw. And we would go to the downstairs bathroom, me and my friend. And we would sniff the whole the whole bag it was like a small bag mm -hmm. and see who made it back to our friends first and we like never made it back <laughs> that's a that's a pretty intense game <laughs> yeah anyway i got sober that's a whole another story but i would go to the club for one year i went every weekend to teach myself that i could still have fun and not do drugs but what i also learned on the side of that was i'm not missing anything it's the same people doing the same drugs listening to the same music yeah so it, it's know. funny to say that because one one of my things like sometimes people be like oh i had so much fun last night and i'll be like really i'm like because like i saw you drooling on yourself in the corner like like that's not <laughs> that much fun you know and so like yeah. but like, i think that's one of the things you start realizing is that like you know that they're you're not missing out as much as you think you are right because like you always paint like the bigger story in, in your head than like what's actually happening. Right. Totally. My head had crazy stories. Uh, so yeah, I forgot the question that got us here. Oh, the moderation thing. Yeah. And then before that. Yeah. Just, a, I guess moderation in the space. So I guess, so now that like, you, right. Like, so you go, you delve into the space, you have your nippy mm -hmm. drop and I assume the create your creative juices start running and you're kind of like, what's next, what's next. And when did, you know, you have this upcoming drop that's coming on the 11th? Yeah, I've had, so I guess to. So tell, yeah, tell us the origin of, of this drop and then we'll get into the details of what it is. Sure. Yeah, I guess what I did was I had a really small, like 28 piece drop on the July 4th. And I did one or two like mints on like open on foundation, I think prior and then, um, yeah, minted another piece in August and then did a series in October. So that, so I've been like sort of playing around, seeing how the space works. And yeah, I guess um, what, what I found, what, I'm, I'm just curious, you know what I mean? Like, I'm curious how to work in the space and, I, and I'm like constantly, um, coming up with different ideas of like how to engage and how to pay people back. So um, 
Yeah, another prerequisite to what I'm about to say is uh, that whole guidepost thing. It's important for everything I do that I sort of like, I describe it as like I take my soul and I put it in a glass jar and I put it right here on the table for everyone to see. And that's how I make my art. And I think that's the only thing that's gotten me to here is like just being like wearing my heart on my sleeve and just being completely like um, uninhibited, just like here. This is it. This is how I feel. This is my brain. And so what I'm doing now is uh, I saved. Let's see if I can show you. So this is my studio. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. But right there is a toilet. And inside mm -hmm. of that toilet is uh, where I've saved every stencil from every tattoo that I've ever done. And so there's... Um, we're dro it's called the Snuffy 500. And uh, basically it's 500 of my soul in a jar. Um, and it's, yeah, it's my career's worth of work uh -huh. in this uh, one NFT project. I mean, that's incredible. That's awesome. As somebody that was in, in, your, uh, in your studio and that actually saw the toilet like in person, like it's really like incredible, right? Cause it looks like this, it almost looks like a Greek Course, like a house I would see on Mykonos somewhere. Like this would yeah. be like the, the toilet in the master bath or something, it feels like. Yeah. And it's filled with all your stencils. And I think that's incredible. Yeah. And I guess for those that don't know tattooing yet, this is an example of a stencil. Uh, maybe not the best example. Technology has gotten better with tattoos. Uh, but I'll just real quick explain how a stencil works or how a tattoo works. Here you go. So basically... Um, I design a tattoo. I present it to you. Uh, you say, this is great. And then I say, cool. And then I stencil this and I glue it onto your skin and then I peel it off. And then I just simply color in the lines and make a tattoo on your body. And I take this and I just go and put it in the toilet over here. And then that's what I've done. And it's actually illegal in Denmark, I've come to find out, to save these things. But <laughs> we're not in Denmark. Right. So, so, yeah, as maybe some have seen on my, uh, on my um, Twitter or something, we put it all neatly in this roll. So this is like 150 feet of, like, stencil, uh, of individual stencils for the presentation of them and safekeeping and whatever. And so what we've done now is taken every single one and uh, put it on um, on a body that I made. And there's 500 and well, it's called the Snuffy 500, but I think we're going to do 555 of them um, because there's like gifts and surprises and tokens and shit like that. I think it's important to say like, you know, I, if you look at the pieces that I've collected, which is not that many NFTs, like I buy shit that I, be, that I just like, like I buy it for the art and other people don't necessarily do that. And that's fine. But like, yeah, it's the same thing here. It's like, there's gamification, there's surprises, there's rewards, there's all this stuff, but I'm not going to announce that until maybe two weeks down the road. Cause I really want the art to come first. I and mean, this is my whole fucking career worth of tattoos it's a really big deal to me i'm like individually i'm looking at every single piece i'm like fuck i don't want to i don't want to give this one away it's like it means so much i remember every single story you know it's like these are 500 and whatever 55 or whatever these are hundreds of stories thousands of hours that i've spent like this this is the view that my computer has <laughs> <laughs> like thousands of hours i'm like till the end of the night and then I'm tattooing and it's like yeah I really fucking I put every my entire fucking life uh, in my art career that is into this and now I'm presenting it on this stage and I'm I'm really excited for it yeah I mean that's awesome I know I'm super excited you've been you've been sharing uh some of like the teasers with me and I'm like yo this is so dope and like <laughs> I can't wait and yeah I mean just I guess what are you where? What platform are you dropping it on? So for those that like want to know about it, want to, to look up more info, and then how much are each of the NFTs going for? 
Great uh, point. So it's going to be on Snuffy NYC, www.snuffynyc, which strategically, that's my Twitter handle, my Instagram, the Discord. It's all the same. Snuffy.nyc. Okay, snuffy.nyc. All right, cool. Yeah. And okay. then um, we're going to drop it there. It will be migrated as a verified collection into Nifty Gateway, like afterward. Mm -hmm. um, we are on the 9th is going to be an airdrop to clients that I've tattooed that went through the process. We onboarded them into Web3 or, meta, you know, we got them into crypto. They set up yes. a meta mask and I'm gifting. Like, I want to fucking, I don't know if it's illegal. I want people to get the bag. Like, I, this is payback time, motherfucker. This is payback time. Like, you know, if I, the way I see it, which is the, the and I'm going on tangent, but the NFT space has turned me from being a, like, smushed, like, New Yorker who's just, like, <laughs> to, like, come on, everybody, let's go. It's this way. <laughs> like, you know, and it's awesome. It's the same energy, but the reward is so much greater. Like, if I can get whoever believes in me i want them to succeed i want this community that is like hey we like snuffy we like what he's about and how he whatever the fuck you like about me i don't know i want i want you to pay your fucking bills like let's go if i could help do that isn't that sick you know so that's what this is about so on the ninth the people that went through the process and set up metamask are getting airdropped their tattoos so like <laughs> So question, so then, uh, because I just selfishly, right, because I've been uh, kind of doing the same shit where I'll like, I'll be like, I'll offer somebody that's not in Web3, I'll be like, I'll give you an NFT and it'll be pretty valuable, but mm -hmm. like you have to, you have to do all the work. Like you set it up, you figure it out how to sell it. Like, I'm not going to help you with that, but yep. just know that here's like this like proverb proverbial pot of gold that you mm -hmm. can access. But I'm like, because I know like as soon as people kind of like get red pilled and they start going down the rabbit hole, they're like, Oh, this is actually pretty cool, right? Like, what else can I do with this shit? And like, to me, it's like that's well worth it, right? Because it's almost. I'm, and then they're like, "How can I repay you?" I'm like, "Dude, pay it forward. Like, bring other people into the space, help somebody else out." Because I don't, I don't need your help per se, right? It's like I, you know, like monetarily speaking, right? So it's like, you know, it's like you know, get more people into the space. How's the reception been from like your clients that you reached out to and like them coming in? It's killer. I mean. It's not, not, this isn't, you know, this isn't world global changing shit, but if I can help even three people. So mm -hmm. as of now, I think like there's going to be 70 airdrops, I think. That's a lot. Yeah. That's it's lot. fucking awesome. I'm like. And these are, these are people for the most part that weren't in web three before them. Uh, it's I, a private value mix, right? Yeah. I can't like, I know, um, like there's. A couple of people that have hit me up that are just like, it's cool because they have huge followings. They're like in this TV show or play for yeah. this football team or whatever. And they're like, you're going to be the first NFT I have. I just got my you know, manager to set up a meta mask or whatever. Oh. I'm like, Fuck you, let's go. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that, that's awesome, man. Like kudos to that because I think that that's like, that's like the next phase, right? It's like, how do we, how do we, like we, we've been red pilled and we understand the the value and the opportunity here. It's like, how do we like share that with our homies, right? Yeah, I mean, the way I see it is like between people that I've tattooed and then people that like aped into my NFTs, like these are the reason why I can live this life. Mm -hmm. Like, what's it cost me really to pay it forward? You know, because that's in that's that selfless selfishness that mm -hmm. like you know, when you were saying like helping you helps me more, mm -hmm. it's like the same thing. It's like, right. let me help you. Do you know how happy it's going to make me? You know what I mean? I'm just like, if you could like be self, if, if there's a way to like make everyone better around you by being selfish, like, fuck it, do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not hurting anybody to help or to make progress, then like do that. You know, that's how, you know, that that's an MO I live by. It's like get ahead by helping people and but mostly by not hurting anybody else you know right. that's a big mo and then my other one is like if you are doing something that makes time disappear then you're doing the right thing you know unless it's like 
murder or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like that. That's a good, right? Because you're, you're operating in flow, right? And then that's like kind of like the key to everything. Yeah. I mean, when I'm tattooing, I time doesn't exist. Like I, my phone doesn't exist. Nothing exists. It's me. I'm present. That's it's my meditation. It's like right. just me and the tattoo or the person or whatever. But it's like right. all this. No, I got blinders on. And so I use that as like, a, you know, a foundational tool in anything that I do moving forward. It's like, is this making time disappear? Is this positive? Am I being productive? Am I creating? And am I expressing myself? the way I want to. And if the answer is yes to like all that shit, then it's cool. Cool. That, that's awesome. I love it. And uh, yeah, I guess I know you don't want to give that much uh, alpha leaks uh, with regards to what's coming, but like what, what can you share uh, with the people that are listening with regards to, I guess, what will be coming in the pipeline uh, with the Snuffy 500 or what, okay. what that you might be working on? Yeah, I went on a tangent. So the 9th of January is the airdrop to those like 70 people. So that, you know, that's that. On the 10th, if you own a Snuffy NFT, you have access to this drop. Early access on the 10th. On the 11th, if there's anything left, uh, it goes out to the public. So the public drop is on the 11th. Anyone that holds a Snuffy NFT, uh, Nifty Gateway is doing a snapshot for us. And on January 10th, you will be able to mint your piece and there'll be that, that time window. Um, so yeah, 9, 10, 11. Will people be able to pick which ones they mint or is it just yeah. going to be random? It's going to be random. Yeah, Very so cool. the, the tattoo people are, um, the tattoo claim airdrops, those will be minted like your, like for example, yours, that's going right. to be yours. Um, but everything Wait, I, think that, you got, I think you got excited, right? And sent it to me already? I... You have like the Air Mag like prototype from the year before they actually released it. So it's like <laughs> yours is not really it, but it's like probably more rare because it's Sounds like rare. Sounds it's rare. Like, <laughs> yeah, not it's a shitty comparison because like look what happened to them, but like you have like the Princess Diana beanie baby with the fucked up tag, and it's like <laughs> but we're not going out like that. Okay, <laughs> so, all right, fair enough. All right. It's actual like utility and value. Um Alpha leak, I'd say, oh, so what I think that we are going to do actually is on the, if for everyone that's not getting the tattooed airdrop, we are minting um, um, on the 10th and 11th, we're minting, uh, uh, how do you say, a static, like an image that doesn't have the tattoo on it yet. And we will reveal that um, a week or two later. Okay. So we're, we have an evolving thing. And then. Yeah, I guess as far as that goes, there's going to be – it's bas basically like a collector's game where um, if you – you know, the first people to reach a certain level um, will sort of get – So, okay. I, I So, I, I, the question I had, right, is there – any way that people will be able to kind of get a tattoo from you or is that somehow included in the drop? Um, or, so yeah, part of those like extra tokens, I don't know if tokens is the right word, but part of those extra, um, we'll call them more wins, part of the Snuffy 500, the extra ones are going to be, uh, they're going to be sprinkled in there. Um, it, it might be one, it might be uh, a few, and it might okay. be on the day of the mint, but it might be in two months, okay. you know, where, cause, cause we basically have levels. These, this is, these are evolving pieces. Right. Uh, in the sense of like the, the art, does, the colors evolve, they change and there's tears. And so right. built like baked into this project is like, you know, at level four, this piece actually turns into a tattoo token. Right. For example. Okay. So then my, I have a question for that with regards to what, how do you think and see NFTs kind of changing or maybe not changing at all the tattoo industry, right? Cause like, you know, you obviously as a tattoo artist, like people are paying you for not only your creativity, but also your time. And I know you always hear these stories about, you know, artists having like a super long wait list and, you know, you pay now so that you can get tattooed in a couple of years. And like, to me, it's like, is that like, you know, do you think that that's something that like tattoo artists, might be using in the future some sort of nft system with regards to that like what are your thoughts there um i mean i think this like 
so this drop that I'm doing is what I'm is is how it's gonna go for me. I mean, right. you know, I'm again only one person. So like to do Cinema 4D and make the and market and do the stuff and all and and be friends and have a social life. I can't do all the shit and tattoo full time. Right. So essentially, like, um, if you hold a snuffy yeah. NFT then you're just part of this club uh, that has access to me. And when I right. open my books, then those are the people right. like, that I'll give access to. You right. know, there's no, it's a no brainer. So for me, that's how I'm going to set precedent. Uh, if you want a tattoo for me, I mean, check it out. There's just, I, I don't have that many collectors, but I consider myself more of like uh, more of a, I'm a one of one artist as opposed to like, a giant collection artist so this is like this weird in between this project mm -hmm. but i mean between this project and all the people that bought in to all my past nfts like um you know there's going to be at least a, you know 500 to a thousand collectors mm -hmm. like i can i can't i can't get through those people in my lifetime tattooing right. them right right because yeah I mean, each tattoo is like days of my life making a, the art for it it's like so that's how i plan to use tattoos there's also and not to like uh, alpha leak not to do that but like yeah i mean tattooing avatars like your fucking punk should have a face tattoo you know what i mean ooh. like oh that, ooh, wow i didn't even think about that i like that idea so i think that's kind of where things where things are going i mean people's digital identity has such a more powerful presence than their per like gee when you walk down the street how many people could possibly like could you possibly communicate to right versus right. on your phone boom you got at your at your uh, beck and call a hundred thousand people just in wherever and so they recognize you because of what i'm looking at right now mm -hmm. and so now we're talking about people and this is more like um uh macro but mm -hmm. people's digital profiles are are taking they've they've taken over the real real profile you know it just right so yeah i mean tattooing um people's um digital present like digital personas i mean i don't see where uh, there's no way it can't go that direction and the cool thing actually you know what i'm not gonna fucking alpha leak this okay right. i'll just <laughs> i'll tell you in private but there's okay. cool shit I that, yeah all right. Awesome. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't want to take up that much more of your time. I know you've been, uh, you've been, we've been talking and like jamming and like really, really, I, I really appreciate this conversation, but before you go, a couple questions I have really quick is what is your favorite NFT that you own? Ooh, that's so unfair. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give you, I don't own that many. I'm just sort of like splashed in, but Brian Brinkman, um, Robert Gallardo, thank you, X, um, fuck, man, Jimmy Regular, and Andreas Wannerstadt, I want to say, that's his name. Uh, but there's, like, a lot of NFTs that I just can't fucking afford. Like, I met Ness. We had a pizza party here. Fucking love Ness's work. It's dope. I can't afford it. You know, right, right. um, there's, yeah, man, I, I'm sorry. That's the answer. Okay. There's a lot. All right. Cool. All right. Nice. Um, yeah. and then what, what are, what, what about me? My favorite one, um, man, it changes so much, uh, throughout time. I, you know, my classic favorite is the, the one I did with Twerky, uh, which okay. was, it was almost a year ago, uh, like next week or the week after where it was really what the first artist where we did a collab together mm -hmm. and, um, they reached out to me and like, you know, I, I had, you know, my such a small following at the time and we did a collab and I tweeted about it. And then they ended up making like, you know, 8,000 or $10,000, like, like in 20 minutes and like selling out like all their previous work. And they're like, thank you. You changed my life so much. And like, you know, they told me their story and it was like, they're this immigrant in Eastern Europe. And, you know, they were like struggling and how now this person is in the NFT space and like, like pretty prolific and doing a great job. And like, 
you know, I'm like, oh, that, that's awesome. Like that was me able to, to what you're saying, like pay it forward, right? And it's like, I, I, like, I like having that NFT because it reminds me of that, right? Of being like such something that to me was just like a tweet, right? About like me doing something with this person. And that was like life-changing for them and realizing that like, you know, your, your actions can have a huge impact on, on other people. Totally. You know, so, so yeah, that one's my favorite one. Um, what are you most excited about in the NFT space for 2022? Um, more of this. Ooh. Okay. All right. Just like, yeah, it's like, so it's like right now NFTs feel like having a TV in like the 1800s. <laughs> it's like, this shit is insane. Now what? You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, so I'm excited for that. I want to fucking... I'm going to say this right now. I want to build a mini golf game and like, I have some crazy ideas. Ooh, okay. I love it. I That's love it. I was, the other day. I was like, do you like mini golf? You're like, yeah, I like mini golf. I'll <laughs> like, yeah, I'll like <laughs> all right. All right. Cool. I mean, I remember I used to play, I think it was called Candy Stand, uh, Candy Stand mini golf on my computer uh, yeah. like years ago. Years, I think I was still in high school, but like this was like some terrible 2D game that, you know, for some reason, I would be like, yeah, like we play, we like do multiplayer and we yeah. play for money and like all that crazy shit. So, well, I mean, there's a like shameless plug, but walk about mini golf in Oculus is fucking lit. So, I mean, okay, cool. I'll, I'll make sure to check that out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Snuffy, thank you for, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, best of luck on the drop. I know I'm going to be trying to, to mint whatever I can get my hands on. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to seeing you the next time I'm in New York. Hey, man. I, I like, right back at you i'm so excited that you had me on here i'm so grateful it's uh for me it's a mile so I, don't, I don't get i don't feel like i ever get like nervous but this morning i was like fuck like <laughs> you know i'm just like i'm really stoked. yeah you're such a powerhouse and and such a fucking leader by example just like being welcoming and genuine and, and helpful and it's like i don't know how the fuck you do it but i'm, I'm grateful that uh you gave me the time man thank you so much all right. Awesome. And then for everybody that wants to reach out to you on socials, it's snuffy.nyc, right? On, on all your socials? Snuffy.nyc all right. awesome. on all my socials. My Twitter is like snuffy.eth, but I'm still trying to figure out how the fuck that all this stuff works. Yeah, I get, I get confused sometimes as well. So don't, don't, you're not alone. So, yeah. all right, cool. Snuffy, thank you. And, you know, best of luck on the drop. And, you know, we'll be hearing more from you soon. You're awesome. Thanks. Right. Talk thank you for tuning in, everyone. Thank you all.